joining all of us. Wow, still people joining. The number is rising. Great, great, great. Thank you and welcome to the Local Guides Clean the Map session. Um, if you want to share screenshots, stuff, remarks, anything, uh, you can do that on social media with the hashtag Community Life 2020, of course. And if it's related to Local Guides Clean the Map, the hashtag we commonly use is LGCTM. So feel free to do that in uh, any way and shape you want. I will be hosting the session for today uh, and have loads of Adrians assisting me. One Adrian is sitting in Brazil and is uh, Alexandra who is managing um, the, the uh, letting people in and kicking people out if they're uh, not behaving as they should. Um, Feliciana is here too. She will be monitoring the chats. I'm not sure uh, how much time we will have for uh, answering questions. We'll see about, uh, about that. Paul is also here monitoring uh, the session and uh, recording. And of course, I absolutely wanted to have a picture of Adrian as well, because the efforts he has been making uh, these past few weeks are really tremendous. Okay. A uh, short overview of the meeting rules. You might have seen them before. So it's being the session is being recorded, which also means please mute yourself, but feel free to use the chat window. And there's also the possibility uh, to uh, ask questions in a dedicated uh, questions section of Meet. That's this uh, thing with the uh, triangle and the two or the squares and the circle next to the meet uh, section or the chat uh, session section uh, rather. Um, if uh, uh, you don't mind, you can put your camera on, of course, because we like to see your friendly smiles. And should you be uh, attending on a smartphone, please uh, hold it in landscape mode. So if you have questions, as I said, uh, you can post them in the chat or in this uh, questions uh, possibility and we will cover them at uh, either at the end of the session or if there's not enough time, I will certainly answer them later in a uh, post on Connect. Okay, for those not yet familiar uh, with the local guides, clean the map, a very short introduction. It's actually a project that I started uh, early year uh, in, in this year, early 2020. And I was inspired uh, to do this. Actually, or the, the, the idea to uh, set this up came during Connect Life uh, 2019, where 200 fabulous local guides were coming together in California. And it was so inspirational that this just popped into my head at some uh, point. I created the post and, uh, well, there's been so much response. You also see the number of likes and comments on that uh, post are quite, uh, uh, quite uh, dramatic. Um, if you haven't done so, uh, please uh, check out the post itself. Uh, will be linked to um, several uh, places, of course. Uh, because uh, it does contain a lot of information, a lot more than what I can cover in the session today, uh, and a lot of inspirational things on how you yourself can uh, participate. Okay, um, Local Guides Clean the Map is all about uh, getting rid of things that do not belong on the map, do not or no longer belong on the map. There's a lot of information which is still on the map, but doesn't belong there. And basically there are uh, four types of uh, what I, you could then call rubbish data. The first one are uh, things added by local guides by accident. But there's also stuff added by local guides on purpose. The third type is uh, information left on the map by businesses unintendedly. And finally, you could also already guess, I think there's also information and entries added by businesses on purpose. Let's look into those four in a bit more detail. So first, points of interest, places, information added by local guides by accident. 
it could be that the local guide wants to add a point of interest, a place on maps, uh, because he or she honestly believes it's missing, uh, but still it's already on the map, but in a different location, 50 meters down the road, for example, then of course, when you're there, you don't see it. So you say, okay, let's add this place. It's helpful to other people. Well, in reality, you're creating a duplicate listing because you didn't see uh, where uh, the original or the real one already was. It could also be that you're at the location, you see, okay, this, this, I'm, I'm not seeing this point of interest, so why don't I add it? But actually it was there, but simply not shown. And this is still one of the big mysteries of Google Maps. What is the algorithm deciding which points of interest are shown to you when you uh, look at the map and which not. It varies if you zoom in or zoom out, but sometimes, or a lot of times, existing points of interest are there, but simply not shown. So if you then add it to the map, it will be a duplicate listing. You should get a warning, do you mean this or this, but you can overlook this, or perhaps the warning is uh, uh, not coming at certain uh, points. It could be, of, of course, also that things are added because the local guide has incomplete knowledge of the guidelines provided by Google or the best uh, practices. And if this could be the case for you, dear local guide, I have a wonderful tip for you, and which is a shameless plug, of course. Um, the Let's Guide podcast, which is also hosted by me, has a lot of uh, episodes which specifically cover one uh, topic. Most of them have one topic. Um, some of them are also very nice interview episodes. And usually the episodes take about 20 minutes per episode on a specific topic. For example, what's the best way to enter a name for a point of interest? There's one on um, shopping centers, for example, or uh, what, what photos should you be posting and stuff like that. The podcast can be found in any regular podcast player or streaming app. So just check it out in whatever you're using to listen to podcasts. There are uh, 28 episodes uh, already out. Number 29 is uh, already mentally being prepared, but you can understand that this community live event was also taking up some of my resources. So I'll see when I get it out, but definitely there's more episodes planned soon. Okay, so the second category um, of rubbish data, as I labeled them, is uh, information or points of interest added by local guides on purpose. This is, of course, hunting for points. If you add a point of interest and it's accepted, you get 15 points, which is one of the highest um, number of points you can reach with a single uh, edit. And that makes it very interesting of, or very tempting of, tempting, of, tempting, of course, for people uh, to just go and add more points uh, of interest to gather those 15 points each. Do not do this. Really, it's really do not do this. It's not something you um, will, will be able to do uh, for a long time because you will get the points, you will reach a higher level and then get sus suspended and kicked out of the local local guides program at all. So simply not to be done, of course. The third uh, one uh, is, or the third category is uh, a point of interest left by businesses unintendedly. So when shops go out of business, uh, obviously it's not the highest priority of that previous shop owner then uh, to remove the point of interest from maps. Um, obviously, or unfortunately, due to COVID-19, there's a lot of shops going out of business uh, right now. So this might uh, lead to more of this type of data to be removed from maps. A lot of those businesses are unclaimed uh, or the business owner has lack of knowledge about how exactly Google My Business works or doesn't know about Google My Business at all. So that's of course a, a source of a lot of information just remaining out there on maps. 
And then you also have cases where the new business owner is adding a new point of interest on the address, but is not aware that the old one is there or is not removing or doesn't even know how to remove the old one. And finally there, uh, then there are the points of interest added, added by businesses on purpose. And this could be uh, due to a lack of knowledge also here from the uh, business owners and lack of knowledge specifically about what are the guidelines uh, as to which kinds, which types of points of interest are eligible or mappable as we say. Another um, additional or, or, or on purpose addition could be that there is already a uh, point of interest uh, for the, with the official or the legal name of the business and then another one with the commercial name is added. And then, of course, uh, uh, one category which is very important in this respect this, uh, are the... Um, let me just... My, to my slides um, is of course also um, service providers uh, faking local uh, subsidiaries and that's uh, one of the main uh, sources of spam on the map it's just people on purpose creating fake uh, locations okay enough with the theory let's see some examples i think most of you were waiting for that um, the first example is uh, a shop that is uh, uh, out of business. So uh, the example I've been showing here is a chain of stores, shoe stores called Brantano in Belgium. And they were bankrupt uh, a couple of months ago, but a lot of them are still on the, uh, on the map. Um, so as you see in the uh, screenshots or the, the, the photo in the upper right corner, that was in the media that they were bankrupt. So it's easy for you to see uh, that this could be a place that uh, should be removed because they were bankrupt. Um, uh, this, the, the, the brand or some of the stores were taken over by another, by a competing chain of shoe stores but the new owner didn't um, or, or didn't keep all of the uh, Brantano uh, shops open. They selected the best ones, of course. And uh, if you look at the website of this um, specific entry, it already points to the uh, new owner. And uh, the one I want to show specifically uh, was uh, also not was not reopened because there's an original shop of the, that chain uh, nearby. In the same area, I will go to the live demo in a minute. Uh, there's also another point of interest, um, which was um, which is still the only one, the only point of interest that you see, even when you zo zoom in uh, quite uh, intensely. But there's another uh, place now which I've just I drive by there quite regularly, and I just noticed it's my personal observation that the the one uh, still on maps is closed, and another place is there now. Okay, let's check out what that looks like. So here we have, as I said, this this Brantano uh, shop. It was then uh, also with the wrong category because, okay, they did have some clothing, but it's definitely a, a, a shoe a chain of uh, shoe stores. Um, with the address here, uh, and it says, okay, it's closed because it's uh, Sunday over here. Was it open all, on Sunday mornings? Okay, anyway, it's not uh, indicated as permanently uh, closed. Um, if I go to the website, I see it's already the website of uh, the chain called Van Haaren, which is the new uh, owner. And if I look on the map here, let's just go a bit closer. Then you see here the fashion store. Uh, that's that's actually the new sh the new uh, place on this uh, uh, address. So there's another 
show, uh, store here, but that's correct. This building has two stores, one on the left, one on the right. But this one is definitely no longer uh, valid. Um, because if I scroll just a bit here, where is it? Um, I hear you have. So here's another shoe store, but that's not the new owner. This one is Van Haren Shoes. That's the new owner of the Brantano, uh, the shops. Um, so it, it took over uh, all of these shops, but obviously with another shop so close by to the, uh, the uh, old one, they're not going to keep this one open. So actually, uh, what we can do right now is, of course, uh, to uh, suggest an edit. And as a reason, this used to be open, so it's not temporarily closed, something we use a lot um, these days uh, with, with COVID, of course. Never existed is also not a good reason because it did, it did exist. It did not move to a new location. It's not private or home. It's not spam or fake. We'll use that uh, for some others. <laughs> I've used that intensively. It's also not a duplicate because um, there's one only one entry with this uh, with this name here, and uh, it's there's no legal issue. It's just permanently closed. So let's just send that. Thank you very much. Um, as I said, um hoping that it's still the case because actually I found these examples a couple of weeks ago and I was quite anxious that some other local guide might be making these corrections before I was able to show them to you in my uh, in my presentation. So as you see here uh, in this building there's only one uh, one business no matter how much I zoom in and out but if I go search for this place, the Luxburg, you see it's there. And um, it's in the location. I uh, It was my personal observation that this is there and the other place is no longer there. So it's uh, quite weird uh, that this one is still, uh, still shown here. So also in this case, um, I can simply suggest an edit. to close it once again. Right, switching back to the presentation uh, now. So these are the, the quite straightforward things that you can come across uh, on the map. Um, how do you find them? Well, of course, uh, uh, as, as I said with, with the example of Brantano, you read, you hear about it in the news uh, that something is happening there, and then you can go check uh, in your local area or even uh, in the in other uh, cities where you know the situation. And yeah, why not take a trip and go check out some other things for yourself? Um, then an example of what I mentioned um, with legal versus uh, commercial name. So this is an example of a gas station. So it's a, actually a chain of um, gas stations, which is called Avia. That's the uh, commercial name. But as you see in the screenshot, there are um, two uh, points of interest there on the same uh, same building. And these, uh, this in this uh, chain, the uh, gas stations are independently uh, independently owned but it is also a chain. So my guess is that one of the um, two points of interest, the one uh, marked as uh, Avia, was added by the chain or somebody in charge uh, at the headquarter for managing the maps uh, entries. And that with the legal name was perhaps was added by the uh, independent owner or what is often the case, uh, I'm not sure if how this has happened in other countries, but that's something I see a lot in my country in Belgium, is that um, a lot of information is on the map from some initial import uh, of a database of an official uh, instance that is uh, that has been imported into maps and 
therefore contains a lot of these uh, entries which are unclaimed and that have um, the uh, kind of legal name with uh, limited or uh, something uh, behind the name. Then a, uh, another example of a duplicate listing is the post office in Ardegem, which is part of uh, Brussels. Here you see uh, there are once again two points of interest on uh, exactly the same uh, the same spot. Um, one of them is claimed and the other not, so that's already uh, or that's offered a good indication as to which one uh, should stay on the map and which one should be uh, removed. And as you see, they have uh, uh, different uh, names and also different house numbers. So one is number two house number two and the other one is house number four I, th I think so what needs to be done here is um, both points of interest need their name adapted because uh, the the name of the postal company in belgium is now b post so uh, the entry that remains on the map the name should be b post and then uh, for one of them, um, the uh, house number needs to be uh, adapted. Uh, and to find out which one is the correct one, I consulted the website, which usually has a list of uh, the uh, uh, address locations of the uh, subsidiaries. And there I saw that it's the number four entry uh, that is the uh, the correct one it's important to do those changes first before you merge because um, if uh, you suggest an uh, an edit uh, to merge points of interest it will probably or will likely not get accepted if there are if there is different information on the two points of interest So after all of that is done and approved, then you can suggest a merge. Um, here's another example of a duplicate listing, just to show you that sometimes it can be very uh, tricky to find them. And then once you found them, very tricky uh, to decide what needs to be done. So this is um, Ondraf. It's called the one uh, and from the, the uh, you see on the right and on the left, you see it's actually an uh, abbreviated term for some uh, organization uh, which has to do with uh, radioactive uh, waste material. So the address on both is matching. The telephone number is matching. Uh, both of them are unclaimed. So it's really hard to decide uh, what, uh, what to do here. Uh, as I said, the name is very different, of course, because one is written in full um, in a mixture of two languages. So that's also something we need uh, to, to address. And also the categories here are um, tricky because one is focusing on the fact that it's a government uh, institution and the other category is um, focusing on the fact that it has to do with uh, waste uh, management. So this really is uh, um, a tricky one. And as I said, the merge will only work if both uh, are matched first and then you can suggest a merge. Another example of a duplicate listing or a special case is this one. It's called Krelan, which is a, a bank chain. And actually, uh, um, a lot of the uh, what is now on the map as Krelan uh, used to be Record Bank. Uh, the, the chain was taken over. Um, and uh, after this, this takeover, uh, apparently here, um, two of them or, or another one was uh, added, a new one, uh, instead of the old one being, uh, being removed. Uh, so the old one, instead of being removed, that's what I want, uh, meant to say, it was renamed. So what you end up with is what you see here, a chain or a, uh, uh, two entries on a map with exactly the same uh, name or more or less the same name. One has um, the uh, city name behind it. Um, 
the problem here is that most edits to banks are not allowed and will automatically get not applied what we all know or very familiar with and fear to see in our uh, inbox um, this uh, has to do with uh, problems that have um, come up uh, in certain countries uh, where telephone numbers of uh, bank um, um, bank points of interest on maps were edited by local guides and the telephone number was changed and the telephone number was changed by scammers so people then finding on maps this telephone number and calling the telephone so thinking they were calling the bank were actually calling the scammers and actually lost uh, quite a bit of money through uh, through this so the response of uh, google has been to just block more or less all edits for banks it's not all edits uh, for example if you want to move the pin i've done that successfully for a bank but not for example the name or the telephone number or even the website uh, those uh, automatically get a uh, not applied so what i usually uh, do in these cases is figure out which of the two is um, the uh, real one or the one that should be kept and then instead of suggesting a merge just suggest permanently closed uh, as the reason for removal um, how can you find out uh, which one is uh, the one that should remain on the map well of course um, there's um, information on a lot of sources that you can find out as i said you can find it often in the media but in this case the takeover of record bank by Kralon was uh, even mentioned on the uh, wikipedia page and obviously in most uh, for most chains but also in independently owned uh, shops 99 dot something percent of them have a website which will have the correct in the correct and up-to-date information of course in this case there's uh, a list that you can uh, search for the banks based on postal codes so i'm just able to enter the number there or enter the zip code and find out uh, which of the brands uh, are there or or which of the branches are there or see if uh, a specific one is no longer listed at all Another example of this was, and I'll show that in a live demo in a minute, it was Mobistar, which was taken over by uh, Orange. That's a chain of uh, mobile phone operators or shops where you can uh, buy cell phones and get a mobile phone subscription. Um, and their extra indications can, of course, also be found on uh, the website of the point of interest itself. Um, be this one yes so here we are in this uh, point of interest where you have the two uh, uh, next to one uh, one another oh, i need to don't click on the wrong screen so here you see um this one with the uh, address being recorded here um no website strangely enough they do have a website because I was checking it. Uh, and the other one here, uh, okay, no address. They do have a website, uh, but clearly, uh, and here you also see the, still the Street View image with the old uh, owner. So uh, even not a category, so makes no sense to keep this uh, on, on the map. So I'll simply say, suggested edits and typically you would then say and if i try this he will probably find so he finds the other one he also finds okay there's even with this indicates it's a legal name so there's a third point of interest on this an old one i'll have to also close this one but I'm not doing that because it's definitely going to land as not applied. So I simply say permanently closed, send it off and done for uh, this one. Um, let's 
Let's look at another one I had nearby. Yeah. So here you see um, this was another uh, case. And you see a financial institution uh, nearby. And when I looked uh, when I looked at the websites uh, of Krelon, this address, this um, branch is simply no longer listed, which means, okay, probably this is still a uh, financial uh, so, uh, service provider, but they switched to another chain or they're, they're independent now. So actually this one is simply no longer correct. You don't find uh, um, a Kralon branch at that location. So there it goes. And it used to be there, but it's no longer there. So actually in this case, uh, permanently closed is the best thing to do. Um, would not merge, would not be the proper thing uh, to do. No, not there, but here. I was also going to check. That's the one. So here you see um, the orange shop is there, but the old one is uh, also still um, there. In this case, what I could do is um, start adapting this one and um, to match all the information here. But this is really, so th this takeover was like 10 years ago already. So uh, this is really, really old uh, stuff. It would be a lot of uh, work and it still refers to uh, Mobistar. If you click this um, URL, it even lands on a domain which is no longer uh, uh, registered. So it's clearly that this is a rubbish data and you also see it's not on top of the building. The, the pointer is uh, at the wrong location in the middle, not the middle of the street. Usually it's in the middle of the street. It's the side of the street this time, okay. Let's get it clean to get rid of it. Good. So far, so good. We're getting at a good pace in getting stuff rid of the uh, map. Um, one uh, on the main page of the main the main post of local guides clean the map there's also a list of tips uh, some of them were written by me others were written by other uh, contributors and some of these tips are really really amazing uh, on on how to find uh, duplicates this for example uh, was a tip uh, by uh, our good uh, friend uh, morton copenhagen who pointed out that um, you can, in the search bar, just uh, enter an address uh, on uh, on Google Maps, and then you see all the data of that address. So on the desktop, there is you have to scroll down to uh, at this location, as you see uh, here. Uh, on mobile, it's um, the, the you have to tap the address preview at the bottom to see a similar uh, list. And uh, with a new feature being rolled out in quite a, be, uh, a few countries now, um, which is house numbers being shown on the uh, houses itself, uh, this has become much more, uh, even much easier because just clicking on such a house number will also bring up this uh, uh, subscreen at this location. Let's check out what that looks like. Here you go. Uh, so uh, Rue Royale in Brussels. At this address, um, you see here at this location. So there are apparently three of them. And um, there's a lot of uh, um, 
missing information on most of them. So for example, that's uh, whether it's uh, an optician or not, or without category written in different, uh, different ways. So there's really a lot of um, uh, things to be done here. This is one of the more complex uh, things uh, because usually uh, you have to um, also check uh, stuff like, are there photos and reviews? And in this um, case, well, I think it's pretty easy for you to see that this will be the real one because it has uh, 46 reviews. This only one, probably the guy who added it to the map and then gave a five-star review or the business owner. He or she should not be doing it, but it's happening, of course. And this is, yeah, well, added by accident or because here it's, uh, sank is the French uh, word for five, but written in full. So, and the the optic, this is pronounced in the same way, but written differently. So that can can uh, show us that probably it's it's these are not added on purpose, but these will be accidental things that uh, local guides have added to uh, to the map. Um, I'm moving on to the presentation again because otherwise I might get in time trouble because I have some other ones to still show. Um, an illustration that you should first fix uh, the two duplicates and only then suggest a merge was um, this uh, snooker hall, quality snooker because, and I can't show this anymore because I fixed this a couple of uh, weeks ago, but there were actually two points of interest and one of them had a typo. So it was, uh, well, quality, but with the A and the U at the front um, switched uh, and, and with the typo then on, uh, on maps. So um, I just, yeah, wanted to see what would happen if you uh, just suggest an, an edit with uh, the name not being uh, adapted. And uh, obviously this was not applied. So I did it properly as I'm uh, advising every uh, everyone to do and then did not do it myself. So I changed the name, suggested it uh, in the proper way. Then I suggested another merge and then it was approved within minutes. Um, then we're entering the uh, area of fakes. So first one here is an example of uh, fakes added for points or possibly also for badges. On Antarctica, there's um, an Credits to this one, uh, to local guide uh, Ardian, who posted on this on uh, Connect, and I found the information uh, uh, from his post, checked it out, and was baffled to see what I found, actually. So on Antarctica, there's an Italian base, and uh, as you see here, it has, it has <laughs> like... Uh, 20 restaurants uh, in the uh, area, which is not really credible, I think, if you know the circumstances on uh, Antarctica. So this uh, uh, could be somebody uh, hunting for points, as I said, 15 points uh, for um, adding a new, uh, new place. So 50 time, uh, 15 times 20 adds is 300 points, hooray. Or it could also be somebody somebody hunting for a badge. So you know, for the Trailblazer badge, you have to write a number of first reviews and uh, publish first photos, which will be difficult in this case. But anyway, first reviews you can always uh, publish if you've created the point of interest yourself, which is of course a silly thing uh, to do. And as I mentioned, not to be done at all. Um, then when it comes to fakes as a business model, of course, I have to mention the locksmiths. On the uh, main posts of uh, Local Guides Clean the Map, there's also a list of a couple of case studies that I've uh, really enjoyed doing. It was like being a bit of a detective to uh, track all of this information. It, will, it does contain all the uh, information on what I did. Um, 
with these uh, with these locksmiths. Uh, the goal uh, of those is that they want to be uh, they want to pretend to be a local business, and then they add businesses by the dozen for each town or for each uh, area of town. They are adding a new uh, point of uh, interest and specifically for services where urgency is at play. So, for example, um, a locksmith, so you're, you're locked out and then you urgently need somebody to come to your door to open uh, uh, the door. So in this case, um, they uh, want you because then you say, OK, I'll need somebody who can arrive here quickly. So let's check who is in my neighborhood uh, to do this. And quite often, uh, there's also a business model of lead generation uh, behind this. That means that the points of interest are created by some uh, uh, central agency who is putting their central telephone number or even a, a toll-free telephone number on the website. And when those calls come in, they then sell those as leads to the real locksmiths. So these kinds of uh, fake spam entries are really horrible to find on the uh, uh, map. But then again, it also illustrates the power of Google Maps for local search. Um, another example of this is as for fakes as a business model are uh, local, local appliances or uh, appliance repairs. And this uh, point of interest, as you see, they are uh, based on the telephone number uh, plus four four, which means in the UK. But if you check out their uh, service area, they're servicing apparently to most of Europe. So should you be in need of a uh, repair of your uh, dishwasher and you're based in uh, Sofia, Bulgaria, no problem. You can call these guys and they will come to your house, right? And actually, uh, appliance repair, that seems to be a new focus area of these uh, of these spammers. So as you said, most of Europe is covered uh, with this. So if you find one of these on, uh, on maps, well, fortunately, they have uh, uh, reviews. So of course, you can always check the uh, reviews to find out more information because that's that's reliable, of course. Well, I'm not always so sure. Let's have a look at them. Okay, here they are with their very nice service area. And here we go for the reviews. Well, there's some five stars. Apparently also a few one stars, but okay. Uh, excellent service. Yeah. Sounds nice. No communication when engineer failed to turn. Okay, yeah, well, probably the, at that point the telephone was disturbed or, or whatever. Because here the next one got the dishwasher working again within the hour. So yeah, great, 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 great. It's uh, Penny Jones, somebody who wrote 10 reviews, gave five star. Alison Woods, cover reviews, five star, another five star. Yeah, great. I'll have to give these uh, give these calls uh, these guys a call because they seem uh, worth it, right? Or well, just to make sure there are more reviews, let's have a look at the extra reviews. Five star, five star. Oh, one star. Warning: Avoid like the plague. What's this? Scam. Do not use this company. Scam, scam. Ooh, there might be a problem after all. So why? Would these people, why would dear Penny say it's a really excellent service um, and give five stars? The repairman fixed my, uh, why is she saying it's a Bosch washing machine, machine? Why would we be interested in the brand? But anyway, and here's Allison, excellent service. They repaired my Samsung fridge. Well, once again, they're mentioning the brand, which is a bit odd, right? Another five stars for a Bosch dish. Okay. Why don't I have a look at the profile of this Penny Jones? Okay. Uh, she seems to be a Beatles fan, which is uh, always great, of course. Uh, London Eye, yeah. Hardy's Night Hotel, as I said, Beatles fan. 
uh, and the owner also gave a response. So yeah, this must be a real uh, uh, local guide, right? With real reviews. The tipsy cow, best burgers in town. Good to know that she was there. Oh, prim hang on. This is a five-star review. Really excellent. Fix, but this is the same text, but it seems to be another company. Ah, here it is. Local appliance. That's the review we saw. But why? And this is from, okay, Southampton. This is from London. And then here, really excellent. Fix my butt. From all over the place. Southampton again. Edinburgh. So it seems that our dear Penny Jones was moving around all over the UK and unfortunately had problems with her um, Bosch dishwasher all over the country, which is very unfortunate for her, right? My God, how, how unlucky can you be? Let's see what Alison has been up to. So she was also in London, interested in D-Day, again, reply from the owner. So this makes it even more uh, credible. A restaurant, the, hang on, the tipsy cow. And also eight months ago, they were there together. Okay, must have been a, a nice time out for uh, the ladies. And then once again, Premier Electro Electrics, they repaired my Samsung fridge freezer. So she seems to be moving around the country with a faulty Samsung freezer, which gets then repaired in different countries. I guess you have, um, you understand the point I'm trying to make here that these are of course um, fake um, location, fake uh, points of interest, fake reviews, fake uh, um, uh, profiles of local guides. Um, just created to be able to give five stars, um, five star uh, reviews. This actually has now been exposed by uh, CBC, which is the uh, uh, public TV in uh, Canada. And they also exposed the locksmith uh, problem uh, last year. But fortunately, Google is reacting to this public uh, coverage and it has an effect on our uh, local guides clean the map efforts as i can uh, show in the next slide which is a screenshot of um, my uh, inbox where i collect all the um, replies from google maps and these are from a single day and it's just there were more of them um, uh, but it's just what I could uh, grab in one screenshot. So the, that was all for locksmiths, Slotenmaker, that's Dutch word, that's the uh, Dutch word for uh, locksmith. Um, those were, uh, so I submitted them, I reported them in bulk and all of them were approved very, very quickly and all in bulk. This does not go yet uh, for uh, things like these appliance uh, repair points of interest. I have to be, I have to report them bit by bit and then they get approved but if i try to bulk uh, report them uh, most of them get not applied so here also you have to be a bit careful report just a few per day and then they will get removed uh, quite uh, nicely so to finish off because we're already a few minutes uh, after the de designated time check out the local guides clean map main post uh, there are a lot of tips already there by other uh, contributors, uh, which I want to thank uh, once again very, very much. Feel free to, uh, if you have more tips to share there, to po uh, post them on Connect, tag me, and then I will obviously add them to this uh, post, to the main post. The same goes for case studies. If you'd like to do uh, something similar to what I did in a couple of cases, feel free to tag me and I will uh, add them. And then of course, uh, we had some before COVID and probably we will have others uh, after COVID. You can have uh, local guides clean the map meetups, also possible as a virtual meetup where like I just uh, shared my screen, uh, we could do this, this with a number of people and just move around and start cleaning the, uh, the uh, map. So once again, sincere thanks to all of you who have helped out and still do.
there's no time left, I'm afraid, for a Q&A right now because the uh, next session will start uh, at the moment. Um, will somebody of the moderators please also um, uh, store or save the chat as a text file that I can go through them because I will certainly then um, answer all of the questions in a post on Connect afterwards. I've dug out the questions, Jan, so I'll put them in the document in our shared area. That's perfect. Thank you, Paul. Thank you all uh, for attending. Thank you, Alexander and Felicia, for uh, helping out with the moderation. And um, the lounge is still open, of course. You can uh, go to the social lounge or uh, the breakout sessions will start in 10 minutes. So if you are um, selected for one of those breakout sessions, you can uh, go there and I will do two because I'm supposed to be recording one of those. So thank you much for, thank you very much for your attention. And thank you. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for detailed explanation. Thank you.